I saw them all transform into werewolves. Dear Scary Stories NYC, I know a particular family that work as butchers in a town near me. I can't tell you who they are or where we all live because then they would have to kill me. You see, I happened upon them at a very bad time and I learned their family secret, which is that they are all werewolves. Actually, it sounds ridiculous to use the word werewolf to describe them. If I had never seen a Wolfman movie, I doubt I would be calling them any name like that. They do sort of look like classic werewolves when they fully transform, but the process of getting there is far weirder than any movie could hope to show it. This is a real physical transformation of these men from human to something else. What I mean to say is that somehow their bodies break down and reform. It isn't like they grow hair and their nose lengthens into snouts. First of all, they shed all their bodily hair in the very beginning of the process. The fur that they grow during the beginning of the transformation is different from their human hair, which falls out and then grows back when the werewolf becomes human again in the morning. I'm assuming they must also shed their fur before regrowing their human hair, but I have never witnessed the transformation back, only the change into the monster form that I'm referring to as a werewolf here. I was taking a shortcut through the woods to get home, as night was coming up fast a few years back when I happened upon a clearing with five or six members of that clan gyrating and vibrating and moaning in pain. My first instinct was to run toward them to help them, but as I did so, I saw one of their heads expand into a big hunk of what looked like pale, pink Swiss cheese, and I witnessed all his hair fall out of that Swiss cheese head all in one moment. Panicking, I withdrew to the darkness and watched the impossible nightmare happening in front of me. I thought they were under some kind of an attack, and certainly the idea that they were becoming werewolves would not have dawned on me. When one of them collapsed and then rose from the ground, looking like a huge, bulky dog, but still wearing his same clothing, my mind got twisted around into a pretzel knot inside my skull. Even then... I was not thinking that I was witnessing werewolf transformations. Their skin would bubble, and their eyes would liquefy and run down their cheeks as the entire forms of their bodies seemed to liquefy, dry out, and liquefy again in pulsating waves of transformation. It looked different each time the waves spread out, and each look was so altered from the previous one as to be unrecognizable. I couldn't then, nor can I now, fathom how such a transformation of a human body could take place. This was dark magic, or high science, I'm not sure. I decided to make a run for it, although I didn't know if they were dying or becoming stronger. They seemed to lose much of their body mass, then come back larger within seconds. This process was long and grueling with the men, or former men, creating utterly horrible moaning and clicking sounds as they seemed to be melting, like wax with hydrogen peroxide poured over it. These men were melting and reforming, their skin bubbling and twitching all over. Almost as soon as I began running away, I was grabbed and the hand grabbing me was not human. It wasn't melting and vibrating either, though. It was gray and furry and clawed, and it was connected to an upright standing dog or wolf creature who stood on his hind legs, slightly taller than I was. This was a werewolf, and yet I could still recognize it as one of the brothers of that family. He clearly recognized me, too, but that did not make me feel any better. I had no idea what he was going to do with me, 
and I wished I could just faint so that I could sleep through the rest of this, whatever was going to happen. So I was made to stay and watch the other men all become monsters, long-fanged wolf-like butt, upright human monster beasts. Sometimes they would open up in places, and bodily fluids would pour forth out into the earth. But their bodies seemed capable of changing and healing in ways that I would have thought impossible before that night. It looked like they had a control over themselves at a molecular level, but I don't know how that could be. I was taken with them that night and forced to do terrible things against my will. These were not dogmen, to be clear. These were werewolves, still largely in their human clothing. One of the heinous acts they made me perform was videotaped, and they made certain to get my face in the light. They were framing me for their own sickening and disgusting crimes. By the time the night was over, I became extremely ill. They took me home after I passed out. I woke up in front of my apartment building on the sidewalk, and my pockets had been picked of cash by someone. I went upstairs and packed up some clothes and things so that I could make a run for it. I felt certain that I was in danger, and that they would come back for me, which was illogical. Why would they have brought me home if they wanted to kill me? No, they had evidence in that video of me doing something that would get me put away for a long time in either a prison or a mental hospital. No, they could take me out any time they wanted to, and so it was up to me to keep them calm and happy. The chief way of doing that, it seemed, would be to keep them certain that I was not going to rat them out. And so that's what's happened, or hasn't happened. When we see each other, we nod and wave and act as though everything's fine. Because it is. At least as long as they know I'm not going to cause them any grief it is. Everything will be perfectly alright, as long as I can act as though it's boringly normal that... I saw them all. Transform into werewolves. The Five-Legged Dogman Dear Scary Stories NYC, I want to tell you about a dogman that used to bother my daddy on our family farm way back in the late 50s and early 60s. It made a brief comeback in the 90s, which is when I got to see it myself. Daddy chased it off that first time with his rifle. He didn't think he even came close to winging this super-fast critter. You see, although this particular werewolf-type monster was not quite as tall as some of the more modern dogmen that your channel seems to mainly be about, this was one of the five-legged dogmen, or as my cousin Alvin used to call them, the tripod wolves. These creatures could sometimes stand up on their three hind legs, and stand about five feet tall usually, maybe five and a half feet. That might not sound as scary to you as an 11-foot beast, but my mother was five and a half feet tall. Trust me, that was way too big a monster for her to be comfortable having in the neighborhood. When I heard Chupacabra stories in the 90s coming out of places like Puerto Rico, it reminded me of these five-legged tripod wolves who were drinking the blood from our chickens here further up north. So this werewolf, I'll tell you from my personal memories, had hand-like paws with fingers, and they ended in claws. I wouldn't say they were like human hands, though. They were a modified dog paw, but they could pick things up and hold them. Now, the one that bothered my family those two times had deformities, which made him instantly recognizable. One of his front paws was like a hand, but the other one looked more like a small dog paw, of his three hind limbs, the other two ended in hand-like paws, while the middle one looked more like a standard wolf hind leg. Seeing the creature standing still, you wouldn't think that the thing could move very well at all, but it actually had multiple means of becoming mobile. It could walk in a sort of modified quadrupedal fashion when down on all fives, 
or it could essentially stand up on its three hind tripod legs, which made it taller and freed up its two mismatching front limbs for other uses. In either position, the thing could creep along surprisingly and even alarmingly fast. It reminded me of a crab when it would move sideways, and like a spider once you saw the three legs working in unison to propel it forward. If those were mutant deformities, it certainly had adapted to use the changes to its advantage. I'll tell you what I find the scariest thing about this particular kind of dogman, and that is its speed. You aren't going to outrun it, and if you think you can jump on your motorbike or in a car and wear it down by keeping the speed up over a long distance, you might be disappointed at how long this thing can keep going. This is the Energizer Bunny of cryptids, if it is a cryptid at all. My father and I used to disagree over that. He felt the creature was somehow magical, or paranormal, or extra-dimensional or something. I felt and still feel that it's just a very unique animal. My daddy called me a damn fool and said that no animal could run 70 or 80 miles per hour for 20 or 25 minutes as he'd seen that dogman do. He told me I better get it through my thick skull, that there was nothing natural or normal about an animal that could run alongside your car on the highway and not even be breathing hard. That's not something that could possibly ever happen. And yet people say it happened. And now I'm one of those people who lived through it myself. But you know, if my daddy came back from the beyond, I would still stick to my opinion. I think it's a very natural but exceptionally athletic animal. And I fully expect that real science will eventually have a specimen or two which prove my ideas. Until then, I understand people calling it a cryptid. And I understand wondering if it is from space or Hades or who knows where. I don't deny that real monsters may exist. I just don't want to call the five-legged wolfmen monsters. They are scary, but I think they're real, and I think they're natural. I have a friend that I'll call Elmo because his face is usually bright red. Actually, we found out during the pandemic that we're cousins, although distant ones. So, Cousin Elmo has a few friends who have seen Tripod or Five-Legged Dogman, and none of them sound like the one that bothered my family twice. Those creatures are all supposed to have two arms ending in hand-like paws in the front and three legs ending in dog paws in the back. They're supposed to be strong, athletic, and to be able to move quickly, but none of those stories involve them being able to run alongside a car doing 45 or 55 let alone speeding over 70 for extended periods of time. For those of you using the metric system, just trust me, the one that bothered my daddy and me seems to have had greater endurance than any other. So here's my story, which is not all that dissimilar to my daddy's, although obviously mine took place decades later. It was, I guess, 1998 or 1999, and I was doing a friend a favor and driving a load of sheet metal in my pickup from Boss to Salem in Missouri. The only free time I had to do it was at night, and that was why I ended up getting into trouble with that tripod dogman. Unfortunately, I was driving alone, so I have no witnesses to what I saw. The first time I saw the creature man, it just walked out onto the road in front of me. I was surrounded by trees on that part of the drive, and the thing just walked by peedily out of them. It seemed to have seen or heard me coming long before I sensed him, and he was attempting to block the road in order to force me to stop. I decided to speed up instead. I was looking at that tripod monster, and I was thinking, I'm going to get my revenge for my daddy, and I decided I was going to run him down. The thing is, as I got closer... He only seemed to brace himself for impact, not to move away. It really unnerved me the way he didn't seem frightened by any of this, and also the way he seemed to have been expecting me to do what I was doing. He also seemed to have been there and done that, 
He was already familiar with this situation. Did he see himself as a matador challenging the motor vehicle bulls on the highway at night? And why did he give off the impression that he had survived many of these encounters previously? At the last moment, I veered to the side and screeched around the dog-headed, upright, three-legged, two-armed monstrosity. I avoided hitting him, missing by literally inches. I got around him without having had to slow down at all. This was crucial because I knew I had to get back up over the speed limit ASAP. My father's personal narrative of having been chased down a highway not far from where I was informed me that this particular five-legged dogman was only getting started messing with me on that night. I sped past him, leaving him in a cloud of dust, but I watched in my rearview mirror, knowing that it wasn't going to take long for that animal to emerge from the dust and race after me at speeds no two-legged or four-legged creature could hope to attain and maintain for long if you ever find yourself in the position I was in, I pity you. This dogman took little to no time at all catching up to me, even though I was well over the speed limit. I actually prayed to be discovered going that fast, since a police presence at that moment would have been quite desirable. My daddy told me he had once been given a speeding ticket on the very road I was on, so I prayed for a speed trap that never emerged. Looking at the side of my car and seeing that living night running along next to me made my heart feel like it was going to explode in my chest. The extreme athleticism on display was terrifying. If I lost control and crashed, that thing would finish off whatever the accident didn't. I had to get away from this dogman somehow, and I knew that was going to mean getting lucky. People always ask, so I'll tell you. I did try to take a picture of it while driving, but the glare reflecting off the inside of the window ruined the shot. I rolled down the window to try again, and the dogman's hand shot in the car, grabbing me by the neck and instantly cutting off any ideas I might have had about either swallowing or breathing. Sadly for him, it also caused me to accidentally jerk the steering wheel to the left, which had the effect of sort of bunting the dogman into foul ground off the road. There wasn't an option to stop the car with the dogman somewhere outside, but it was hard to go very fast. My eyes were teared up. I was still gagging and had the reflex to vomit that I was trying to suppress while staying on the road and continuing to put distance between me and and the tripod beast man. As a result, I wasn't exactly driving at top velocity, and by the time I was back up to the speed limit, my bleary eyes caught sight of the dogman in the rear view. I was in such a state that normally I would have pulled off the road for a rest, or even a nap, but nothing like that was an option here. I felt like I was locked in a nightmare that I couldn't escape from, a weird dream that only made sense in a Twilight Zone kind of way. I raced the car toward the lights of Salem in the distance, not letting up on the gas pedal until some other cars in traffic were around me on the road. I felt like weeping and bawling like an infant, but I had to keep pretending to be brave until I got to my friend's place to deliver that sheet metal. Needless to say, when I told him what happened, he insisted I stay over his place and head back after the sun came up in the morning. I wasn't in a position to decline an offer like that. I haven't seen that dogman again, or any other cryptids in general, for the rest of my life so far. I don't know if that particular one is still roaming the countryside, but I know there are more of the five-legged dogmen. I suppose they must not be a race unto themselves, they must be mutations, but the supreme athletic ability they seem to exhibit doesn't usually go with deformities. Maybe these mutations even make it superior to other dogmen. Maybe these aren't mutations so much as improvements.
I can't tell you. I've given you all the information I have. The rest would only be wild guessing about... The Five-Legged Dogman. Thanks, Biggie. Now that some of us are actually meeting up in person again, what we all need is a tongue-in-cheek conversation starter. Like the I'm not sure about moon landings, but werewolves are real line of hoodies. Go to the link in the description and scroll down to find the different kinds of both pullover and zipper hoodies for men and women. Plus, for some reason, we made wife beaters for women as well. If you'd like this design on anything in particular, we can put it on t-shirts, sweatshirts, or whatever, if you ask, at no extra cost to you. Please note that the way we made these has the dogman fighting the astronaut on the back and our Scary Stories skull logo on the front, small in the upper left. If you would like us to put the large image on the front, we can do that as well if you ask us in a comment or email. That is, except for the zipper hoodies, which we can't print large images on the front of, only the back. We have a special discount code SPACEWOLF. It's all one word, and I think it needs to be all caps, but I'm not sure. Use that on checkout for 10% off from now until November 28, 2022. And now here's Hank. Hank? Godzilla Tim, please thank him. He makes us smile when things are grim, which is most of the time. Please join us in thanking Godzilla Tim Walker for making a kind donation to us in British pounds, which made this episode possible. Tim Walker is one of our longtime angel investor type supporter friends who really are as responsible for us still being on the air as we are ourselves. This man's contributions cannot be overvalued, as we would not be talking to you right now without his literal years of support. If you would like to join the legion of heroes keeping us alive, then please listen to the upcoming important message from our international TV spokesmongrel Henry Lee Dogman. But first, here's an incredibly handsome Bigfoot with some very fun news. Biggie? Thanks, Biggie. And thanks to all of you for watching this far. If you liked it, please click like. If you'd like to see more of our work, please subscribe. And also click that bell icon if you'd like to be notified when we put out a new episode. To become an executive producer, you can donate to us through the thanks button under each of our videos or through our paypal.me slash peterbernard209 page. To receive cool perks like secret uncensored Dogman episodes far too wild to ever run on this channel, you can become a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button. Or join our PayPal subscribers club at peterbernard.com. Joining either at the $3 a month level or above gets you access to our over 25 hours of secret uncensored Dogman stories available nowhere else. Do you have a scary story about Dogman or some other kind of high strangeness that happened to you? Let us know by emailing us at scarystoriesnyc at gmail.com or by leaving us a voicemail message at 804 LaScary. You may need to call back on that when it cuts off after, I think, three minutes. And if you don't want to do any of that stuff, thank you for simply watching to the end. Good night, and have a scary tomorrow. Come back, come back for more scary, scary stories. stories.